Hello. So in this video, we are going to be talking about how the degree of a polynomial, the power of the leading term, how that sort of influences or dictates the relative or local extrema of that polynomial. Okay. So recall, we do know a little bit about extrema and polynomials. In particular, if we have an even degree polynomial, we know it has to have an absolute uh, extrema somewhere whereas odd ones definitely do not. And it turns out that absolute extrema sort of also count as relative extrema. So we know as a starting point that if we have an even degree polynomial, something like x squared, then we have at least one relative extrema, which is basically the absolute extrema that it would sort of normally have. Likewise with odds, like x cubed, we know that it doesn't have any absolutes, so we know the sort of minimum case like this one right here, is going to have zero relative extrema, okay? So to be clear, right, absolute and local extrema down here, whereas this one, nothing. Okay. What about the maximum number though? So let's, you know, looking at another example here, we can see, right, we have our curve going down, up, down, up, and we have this right, this local min down here, this local min down here, and this local maximum up here. So we have three relative extrema, and we wanna know sort of how does this relate to the degree of the function. So three local extrema, but notice we have four zeros, right? Well, if you remember from the fundamental theorem of algebra, that was, those four zeros correspond to a factor each, and so it turns out that these four zeros mean that we have to have a degree at least four, which is even, right? So we have a, at least four degree polynomial or an even degree. And it turns out that this thing is uh, giving us n minus one or the degree minus one uh, number of these relative extrema, okay? So we have basically a minimum, like a lower bound, how many is sort of the least amount we could have which with even degree is one, with odd degree it's zero. And we have this sort of maximum or like ceiling number on how many of these local extrema we have, which is the degree minus one. The actual sort of proof, because I realize it's a little hand wavy, the actual proof requires calc one. So we're not gonna dive into the sort of analytic view to really get our hands around that. Again, this is sort of just a way of understanding sort of geometrically how these things are related. All right, so we have bounds, but it turns out we can actually do a little bit better by sort of thinking through what's happening just a little bit more. So if we have the degree minus one as our upper bound and we have some minimum as the lower bound, what about actual possible values, right? So is it possible to have something that has, you know, if we have like a degree four that has a one as a minimum, three as a maximum, could I get one, two, and three as possible values or only some of those? Is there a way to tell, okay? Well, even degree, starting there, if we take something that sort of has one, right, as our one possible thing, right? So we have one uh, local minimum here and we want to tack on one more, let's say, right? Let, we have one. Question is, can we have one that is an even degree that has two? Well, I would turn the curve again, right, to get another local extrema, but that'll give me, so I now have one up here, which is a local max, one down here, local min. I have two. Perfect, right? Except if I keep going, then it goes down, down, away to infinity. And that's not how even degree polynomials work, right? Even degree polynomials have to have the endpoints go in the same direction. So since I started out as, in, as the even degree one going up, that means that the uh, other side, right, has to also go up at the end. It can't go down which means I have to functionally turn again in order to have it going in the correct direction. So they're both going the same way and they're both even, uh, so that we have an even actual degree polynomial, right, both of them going the same way. But by doing that, I have generated another extrema, right? So I now have one minimum, one maximum, another minimum, I now have three extrema, okay? And what this tells me is that I have to add on local extrema in pairs, 
right? So if I if I start going up with M, I want my even, then it has to eventually go up again, right? If I turn once, I'm going up, life is good. If I turn again, I'm now going down, I have to turn an, another time, right? So I can have one or I could have three, but I can't have two. And if I did that again, right, if I tried to turn after this turn, right, I would be going down again. So I'd have to turn yet another time, meaning I would add on two more. So they, they sort of get tacked on in pairs, meaning that the possible number is really starts at one because they have a minimum of one, but then I can only have sort of one plus two plus two plus two. Those are the numbers I can have up to n minus one, right? So I can have one, three, five, seven, nine, right? I have to have an odd number of these uh, local extrema if I have an even degree polynomial. And it turns out the same thing is true for the same reason, and you can sort of go through it as a, as a way of convincing yourself, but it's the same sort of problem where if I only turn once, I'm the wrong degree, so I have to turn again, which means they get added in pairs. Only now, since odd degree has a minimum of zero, that means I can have zero and then adding two. Zero, two, four, six, eight, up to whatever the degree is, minus one, okay? So that's the sort of most, I, I have a lower bound I have an, and I have an upper bound, but I can actually do a little bit better where I also have to have them sort of appearing in pairs. So it tells me that I have between one and n minus one, but only odd numbers. Or if it's odd degree, zero, between zero and the degree minus one, but only even numbers, okay? So sort of abstract, let's see an example. So let's say we have our polynomial here, right? 3x to the fifth minus 16x squared plus 7x to the sixth plus four. So the first thing we need to know is what is the degree, right? So if you look at this, what do you think the leading term is? So if you said 3x to the fifth, be careful, right? Because you can never depend on somebody to give it to you in the right format, especially me because I'm evil. So remember, you want to write it from the highest degree down. So I actually want that 7x to the sixth in front. That's the actual leading term, right? 7x to the sixth. But since that's the leading term, this tells me it's even, right? So that tells me it has an absolute extrema, which tells me it has to have at least one uh, relative extrema, because it is that absolute extrema. And then I add them in pairs. So it has one, three, or five, but five is the most it can have because it's the degree, right? The six, the degree minus one. So it's gonna have one, it can have three, it can have five, and that's it. Can't have seven because that's too high, okay? All right, so as another example, right? Two X to the fourth minus three X to the fifth plus one. Again, make sure to rewrite it in the right order, right? So I have negative three X to the fifth, that's my leading term. Again, since this is now odd, I have no absolute extrema, which means that I'm starting at zero as a possible local, and then adding two repeatedly until I get up to the degree minus one. So degree minus one, five minus one is four. So I could have zero, two, or four as my possible zeros, okay? All right, so what do we do? Well, we talked about how the degree sort of influences or dictates how many local extrema you can have. Turns out evens have to have at least one local because it's the absolute extreme as well. And odds could have no extrema because they might not have any absolute extrema. And on top of that, we know that it, regardless of even or odd, it has up to degree minus one number of local extrema and they have to come in pairs, right? So even could have one or three or five or seven or nine up to the degree minus one. For odd, start at zero, because it might not have any, but then it would be or two or four or six or eight up to degree minus one, okay? So that is that. Mm -hmm.